Hey guys! Um, I am so excited to start reading again on the one and only Bob. Okay, so I'm going to read the um, second part of the one and only Bob today. Uh, let's see. This part starts with Boss. All right. It says, my mom wasn't much for names. She'd had a lot of litters. I guess she'd run out of ideas. My brother first was Natch, the firstborn. Runt, my youngest bro, was the last. Dot had a little spot on her back. And Yip was always complaining. I was rowdy. Goes without saying. And that left my oldest sister. We all call her Boss. Boss was small, but mean, with a distinctive, sharp-sounding bark. She could outmaneuver any of us to the best spot for dining. I admired her grit, even if she did get on my nerves. When we got a big, bit older, less blind, more cocky, I fought her off occasionally, but mostly Boss won. She was fearless, that pup. The truck happened without warning one night. They threw us in a box, left my mom behind. I can still hear her frantic howls. I landed in a muddy ditch. It was a cloudy night, nearly freezing. Even the moon had abandoned me. And the smells, everything so wild and unknown. Animals with big jaws, and upper and bigger appetites, birds that swoop down to kill, death and life all mixed up together. I searched for my siblings until the truth became clear. I was utterly alone. It's called Cars. The next morning, I began my slow journey, moving through the tall, wet grass my limbs stiff from the cold. Now and then, I'd drink from a mud puddle or gnaw on some grass. By evening, I was wobbly with hunger and thirst. I followed the highway. Every time a four-wheeled creature roared by, I froze in fear. And yet, and this is what slays me, I knew that cars meant humans and humans meant the possibility of living just as much as they meant the possibility of dying. Darkness had fallen when it came out of nowhere. The owl, a shadow in a shadow. They don't make a sound, you know, not a sound. It's quite impressive when you think about it. just as her talons, those marvelous weapons, raked my fur. I caught my right front foot in a small hole and stumbled. If she'd gotten a hold of my body, I wouldn't be here. But all she managed to do was grab my tail. Only time in my life I've regretted my handsome hind quarters. I was airborne, hanging upside down, dizzy and dazed. And just crazy enough to think, hey, I'm actually flying, before the terror hit full force. I caught a whiff of other animals below. Later I found out they were pocket gophers. But back then, I just knew I was smelling something completely foreign. The owl must have decided the gophers would make a more satisfying meal. She let loose her grip and I plummeted to the earth. This one's called More Luck. Maybe it was my puppy fat, or my soft bones, or my incredible good fortune, but I didn't die. Didn't even break anything. I'd flown twice in my short life and lived to tell the tale. I found a small hollow at the base of a fallen tree, poked my nose in and got a swat and a hiss from a grouchy raccoon. Kept going waddling, whimpering. Lights ahead. New, strange smells. Kept going. Kept going. It's amazing how much the sheer will not die, or the sheer will to not die can keep you moving. 
This one's called Exit 8. I finally came to a small road curving off the main highway. Exit 8 turned out to be. A big billboard overhead had a picture of a terrifying animal on it. Of course, I didn't know what a billboard was. Didn't know what the scary animal, or didn't know that that scary animal was a gorilla. Let alone that he would become my dearest friend. But something told me to follow the off-ramp. And eventually I ended up at the exit eight, Big Top Mall and Video Arcade. Home of the one and only Ivan. I made it to the mall, slept in dirty hay by some garbage bins. And the next night, I found that hole in Ivan's cage, stole his banana, slept on his belly, and the rest, as they say, is history. For two years, I lived in that seedy old place that was part small, or part mall, part circus, and all crummy. But that was nothing compared to Ivan. He spent 27 lousy years there. And our dear friend Stella, an old circus elephant, was stuck there for most of her life too. When Stella passed away, it nearly broke Ivan's heart. I tried like crazy to get him through those dark days. But what really saved him, I think, was Ruby our baby elephant friend. Before Stella died, Ivan promised her he'd get Ruby out of that awful place. And to my amazement, he actually pulled it off. Ivan and Ruby and a bunch of our other pals ended up going to different places, zoos and sanctuaries that knew how to take care of them. They're with others of their own kind and they're loved and well cared for. It's been over a year now since we all moved and they seem so much happier. Me, I looked out. My girl, Julia, whose dad had worked at the mall, decided her family needed a dog. Who was I to argue? Two square meals, my own bed, all the belly rubs I could beg for. What dog in his right mind would say no to that? The best part is, we don't live far from Ivan and Ruby. I get to see them all the time. I'm glad they're nearby and I'm thrilled they've settled in so well. Really, it's a solid solution, but it's not a perfect one. This one's called tennis ball. The way I understand things, it's like this. We live on a lonely ball called earth and humans have basically been throwing it against the wall for so long that the poor old ball is falling apart. Hmm. It's like me with the tennis ball, chewing away until it's nothing but pieces of slimy rubber that tastes like, well, slimy rubber. And that means there aren't as many places left for wild animals. Seems there are good zoos and bad zoos and good sanctuaries and bad sanctuaries, just like there are good dog families and bad dog families. The good places are trying to keep wild species healthy and safe. They don't want endangered animals to go, to go away forever. They also don't want the earth to turn into a slimy, dilapidated tennis ball. Although, honestly, slimy rubber doesn't taste that half bad. You should try it sometime. The thing is, I would give anything to see my dear pal Ivan deep in the jungles of Africa, where he was born, or to see Ruby running across the savanna with a herd of elephants, her big old ears flapping in the wind. I'd give up a mile high pile of bacon cheeseburgers to see that happen. I really would, but it ain't happening. I get that. And so do they. When you're an animal, helps to be a realist. All right, so that ends part one of our story. I'll go ahead and read a little bit of part two just to get you excited about it. This one's called Dream. This morning I wake up in my cozy bed way too early for Julia to make me breakfast. She and her mom and dad are still asleep 
and even the guinea pigs are silent. Mm, my belly grumbles, and once again I curse my thumbleness. Humans are one big design flaw. The inferior noses, the inscrutable hamdrum rumps, and don't get me started on their <clears throat> odor. But the opposable thumb idea? Yeah, that was a nice upgrade. The can I could open. The doorknobs I could conquer. Anyways, I feel worried. Off. Worry is a waste of time, and it doesn't fit with my tough guy act. But sometimes I can't seem to help myself. Before I wake up, or before I woke up, I'd been dreaming about Ivan and Ruby and Stella. It wasn't a nice dream. A fun and run-toe twitcher. Nope, this one was a nightmare. A bad one. We were swimming, all four of us, in a black, raging river. For some reason, I was in the lead, and I kept looking back, telling them I was going to save them. Me, save them. Two elephants and a gorilla. As I paddled like mad, their voices faded. I had looked behind me and they vanished. And then I heard it, a faint bark. That bark. I woke up then like I always do. I didn't all over shake, trying to toss off the stench of nightmare that clung to me like shampoo after a bath. I told myself to chill, get a grip, stop worrying about nothing. And yet some primitive part of my brain, the wolf in me maybe, is on edge. A lot can go wrong in the moment left to chance. The blink of an eye, the bounce of a bone. There are so many ways the world can find to fail you. And there's a picture down there. You can see a picture of Bob. That was him. That was his um, nightmare. Okay, so I'm going to stop there for today. And we'll continue. I'll read some more maybe tomorrow. I hope you're enjoying the one and only Bob. Oh, I think I love it so far. Bob, he's a crazy little kook, isn't he? Okay, I'll see you guys soon. Love you. Miss you.